Okay, so welcome along welcome to on. another episode of The Escapade Show. So we've got Glenn and Rosie from Soma, right? Pretty cool. How are you doing, guys? You alright? Good, man. Good, yeah, good. Good. Good, so we've been catching up just before kicking off the show and just kind of general catch up and talking about some of the stuff we've got planned. So what's been happening recently with you guys, if you want to just maybe tell some people what you guys do, who you are in the scene. Okay, so I'm Glenn Gibbons, Managing Director of Soma Records, one of the founding members uh, from 1991. Um, we've just basically been running the record label for 27, 28 years and, um, you know, developed all that through all that time. Um, discovered a few big names in the time, discovered a few no names in the time, <laughs> but just uh, pushed forward and uh, done what we thought was right. So recently we just had a slam album out, which has done really well. Um, there's the, the other kind of uh, owners of the label along with myself. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's the, that was the big project we've been working on mm -hmm. in the past kind of three, four, five months. And then we're working towards Soma School now, um, which is an event that you guys are involved in, obviously, mm -hmm. and something we'll talk about later on. Um, it was Rosie, you done the artwork for the new Slam album, didn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. hadn't talent there. Yeah, well, that's part of my job description is doing the, I'm the kind of like graphic designer at Soma, so everything kind of will go through Goes me through before getting put out there. So for the Slam album, um, it was just the process of to and from and then just creating their vision. Mm -hmm. And then um, we all had a, it was a really good collective idea. And then we laser etched the design onto a bit of wood it's and then cool. photographed that. So it really was a piece of artwork in itself, mm -hmm. which we, you can hang up on your wall. Um, and at the moment, I'm currently doing the new album for SLV, who's one of our artists, and that's going to be on CD. So uh, just creating a CD for that. And that's got some really cool artwork inside, a wee booklet with poetry and stuff in it. So Very cool. every project's different, which is good. It's a good challenge. Yeah, that's amazing. I think it's obviously quite an important thing to have that as well as the music, like to just go along with it, because it goes back to like the way... Music used to be sold. It was oh, like it was all, most of it was about the cover on the vinyl, or as a well. music video, mm -hmm. or that. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, invest in the video. It's yeah, I mean the artwork. The artwork's kind of kind of got to go hand in hand with the music, and we've we've been using. I mean, we we don't use the same kind of kind of uh, people all the time, but you know we use certain photographers, and then so we've got a couple of other sort of graphic designers that we we work with as well. Um, if something's kind of quite complicated or whatever, but um, you know, but generally it's cups coming back in house. Rosie's Rosie's doing a lot of stuff that's is, is, is really working um, for the sound of the label. As I say, um, we've got a couple of artists. There's a guy up in Dundee who's who's like a yeah. He does the slam. He does all the slam uh, slam artwork. So apart from um, the last album, he's got some really good illustrations, uh, kind of dark illustrations. I don't know if you've seen it, mm. but I think the if you just check out the website and see the releases, you, all the artwork has a continuity, mm -hmm. kind of like a dark from him. vibe. Um, some of them from, from him, some of them from other. We really, really like to focus on, uh, we work with a lot of um, students and it, that really builds their profile up. And um, we really try and encourage mm -hmm. and give them a great platform to start on. I think that's the best way to go is just to um, really get our mm -hmm. students out there and, yeah. Well, we've got the we've got the album on in the van anyway. We 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 got some because we just done a competition there at Christmas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the sort of soma giveaway. So someone's got the new slam album and all the new artwork. See the the I think I've got the bag around in the corner there. See the soma bags that you've got. Is that the same sort of artwork, Eugene? If you could, thank you. Yeah, that's the Kyle's. Yeah, so this that's is Kyle's. The, yeah, yeah, that's so Kyle's. Yeah, that, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So like that's so yeah. cool. If you can see that. So if, if that's you, a kind of theme. The soma twenty five. It, it was was the first um, artwork he did for us. Um, the box set, and there was like eight images or something like that that was on the yeah. box set. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, with around that theme, that's Lantern Man there. Lantern Man, Lantern it's, Man it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's quite disturbing as yeah, well. Like, yeah, I think that's why we were drawn to it, to yeah, be yeah. honest. It's very tech, it's very <laughs> slam. I must say that the, the album is so different from mm -hmm. slam. It's yeah, like yeah. it's quite like a chilled ambient. Yeah. 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 And 
you know, I, I kind of, I was like, really, I was like, this is so different. Yeah. yeah, it's like, but it's cool. Uh -huh. And I think mm -hmm. that's what Slam are really good at and how they've sustained it so long. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've, got, they've got lots of different yeah. strings to their bow, as you say. Yeah. Um, and Stuart's thing, was he just split up with his wife and he was going through a sad, <laughs> sad time, I think. So he was, so was more melancholy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a bit, it's a bit more of kind of down-tempo yeah. and melancholy. And Best way to make music, though, isn't yeah. it? Through yeah. the emotion, isn't get it, it? Get it out there, put yeah. it out there. and then yeah. But it's a really great album. And I think because their EPs are so slamming, <laughs> which suits their name yeah. um, really <laughs> great techno by the likes of which you'll always hear slam being played in Berghain in Berlin this just took it to a different level if it's it's a, it's its own entity I think uh, yeah um, so yeah it's good to show a different side to absolutely. them absolutely I think yeah. that's important for artists as well to like you know not be too constrained into the one thing mm -hmm. like show those mm -hmm. other strings to the bow yeah. I mean know. slam have always done that with their albums anyway usually they've done like their albums of had a few kind of more ambient kind of laid back tracks on them, electronic tracks on them that, and then built into mm -hmm. their, their kind of more clubby stuff. But this was just kind of a continuous, the same tempo all the way through and just kind of an atmosphere that, that Stuart wanted to, mm -hmm. Stuart Nord wanted to um, sort, of, uh, sort, of, sort of showcase, mm -hmm. if you like. You know what I mean? so. That's very cool. So take us back to like the start of the label. What was the... Can't remember. The vibe. There we go. <laughs> right, I, I don't, I, don't uh, yeah. I believe you. <laughs> See, like, take the, take the f Fifth Amendment here. <laughs> <laughs> but there must have been something in the air back then when you're like, right, there's a need. To, we, we've came, we, we want to do this. We want to start a label. Like, you know, what was the kind of <coughs> the notion or the, the desire to start then? Well, I mean, <sighs> going back to like the beginning, when I left school, I was in a band, and then, um, then. I was in a couple of bands, but and I got signed to a major and then split up. And then I started a hip hop band. We were one of the first kind of rap groups in Scotland. Um, oh my god, mass respect! <laughs> you know, we support, supported the Beastie Boys in the first no their first UK way. tour. Oh, and um, <laughs> so me and my mate had a studio in the West End in his mum's house in the West End, and um, and then there was a place called Chimmy Chungas, which a bar. Which is now Cooper's. I think it's called Cooper's now. It's in Great Western Road, and uh, Stuart worked there. Ord worked there, and uh, another guy who start who started the label with is Jim Matuni. He worked at the door, and then Dave. I think Dave worked there sometimes, but um, and then they had they were just starting to sort of do clubs and stuff like that. And I'd been working our studio was just around the corner, so we used to drink in there all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of how we all met. It was like we would go. To Jimmy Chungas and drink tequila, mm -hmm. and uh, and the, and then the guys started to do they started to do club nights um, at that round about the same time, and um, we just uh, you know it's like you just go right let's try and make, try and make a record something. because mm -hmm. you know me and me and Nigel we'd we'd done a few things I mean I'd made a, made records myself mm -hmm. and and uh, and we'd done um, the hip hop thing and um, and they were like well let's get in the studio and stuff like that so we got in the studio and done a few tracks and then we actually hawked it around all the majors in London we went down to London and so I went around all the usual kind of suspects and all that but nobody was up for it nobody wanted to sign us so I just decided to put it ourselves and that's it you know it's just simple kind of like right fuck it let's just do it and that was the first release then on Soma first then. release the turn uh, on one side and then IBO Rejuvenation IBO on the other side right, I, I, right. That's and amazing. then we met well we kind of knew Dot Allison um and Jim McKinvin and a few other that, that, that were from Dove, one Dove they, be, they became, and um, just mates again, mm -hmm. just mates, and they'd made a record and we put that out, and then, you know, a couple of other mates had made records and all that sort of thing. So, I mean, it was actually, at the beginning, it was hard to, to find people that were making kind of dance music, electronic music yeah. in Scotland. It was like, mm -hmm. you know, we were like, Taboo, we were yeah. putting the word out, anybody want to put a record out, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it, was, cool. it was quite hard, but I mean, we, we, at the beginning, we were going to start the, the label, it was going to be a kind of more indie dance type thing because it was just, because there wasn't, it wasn't scenes then, it wasn't like a techno scene, a house scene, like a kind of indie, it, it was all kind of mashed up together kind of thing. So we were actually, at the very beginning, we were talking about starting a label with Eugene Kelly from the Vaselines. 
who's a mate's my mate's brother, and um, so <laughs> that was before um, Nirvana took t- got in contact with him. Oh so <laughs> you know, we were saying we're like, you, we'll put we'll put some of your stuff out, yeah. and we'll just do a kind of indie dance label type thing. Do you know what I mean? And then they get the phone call from Nirvana, and Aye, like, well. we're like, I we're just going to do we're going to go do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was, just, I mean, so it's just a kind of natural kind of progression of things that you, you know, just try to get get your stuff out there. You mm-hmm. know, like. So, I mean, what would you say then? So, 1991, the launch, right? Mm-hmm. We're obviously 2019 now, which is insane. What? <laughs> what are the main things that have remained the same since 91, right? And what has changed, or has anything remained since 91 and it's all completely changed? You know, what are the main differences now running a label and then? Oh, ah, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. I mean, the. You just have to you have to approach it in a different way now. Marketing, I mean the whole digital thing. Obviously, I mean you know loads of labels went down the tubes in the the early noughties, the late nineties, early noughties because they a they couldn't. Well, everyone had to. We had to downsize. I mean, we were uh, uh, record sales went from you were selling like ten thousand, some of them twenty thousand, like twelves down to like. 300, 400, 500, you know what Major I mean? And, and it was like, within a couple of years, it was wow. like, and then, you know, some of them... Such a drastic change. Yeah, it's a massive change. So, and and then, you know, the whole digital thing wasn't really set up properly, you know, so you, there was loads of torrent sites, um, Pirate Bay and all that, that were still, that were still I and mean... Lime wires and all lime that. Lime wire and all that, yeah, I mean, and then, um, and nobody was really getting on top of it commercially I mean there was loads of people trying it there was loads of people because we signed up to loads of um, um, DMS's early early ones that didn't survive you know um, obviously Beatport was one of the ones that actually launched and, and were able to kind of develop and survive um, but um, so so this, you know it's, it's totally different now it's, it's totally different uh, I mean <laughs> Obviously, social media has had a huge impact on how you market stuff. How you, you know, we very in the old days we would take out adverts in magazines and all that sort mm-hmm. of rubbish, you know, and we just do very little of that these days. Mm-hmm. I remember finding um, a box of promo sheets when we were going through all our old stuff. So nowadays you just send promos out uh, <coughs> digitally. Mm-hmm. Back then they you couldn't do that. So I found what people would do, people's jobs were, they'd go and get a flight over to um, Ibiza or wherever. They'd have a load of sheets and then they'd get the DJs to play them out. And then they'd get all the DJs to actually write right? on the sheets feedback and they would sheets. go through well, them sheets. all. I mean, Huge we would send out, wow. we would send out yeah. promos. We would be hooking 200 records yeah. down to the post office to post out Send to DJs, out. That, that was the promo yeah. mail out, do you know what I mean? And then it was like, yeah. then you'd have to the, have their action sheet and they would yeah. you'd have a prepaid postage and they'd post it back to you. So, it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, it's like the Stone Ages, you know mm. what I mean? Really, yeah. it was only like 28 years ago. One of the ratings but, was, are there hands, the crowd hands in the air? Were the crowd dancing a little bit? I thought that was hilarious. It's like hands in the air or no reaction. I just thought that was so funny. Uh, whereas now it's like, did they have their phone out? Were they, yeah. were they live streaming it? Were they? Yeah, I mean, how that, many phones out? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that there's something, there is also something real about that as well. You know, I mean, how cool would that have been if that was your job? Right, Rosie, today you need to fly to Ibiza. Yeah. And get some feedback for DJs. Feedback from, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but as now it's like, no, you get to sit in your office yeah. and just email them. Yeah, <laughs> You're no. like, oh, Sometimes I, I wish I was back in the noughties, going to Miami and all that. That's crazy. Yeah. I, um, we did, uh, Stuart and I went to Ibiza and uh, we, we had the promos of Positive Education and we gave one to Darren Emerson, Billy. In fact, we were staying with them in a, in a villa, their, their villa, not ours. Watch it, um, man, watch it. And, um, and they th- th- that year, loads of people were releasing kind of ambient tracks that was really, really laid back and stuff like that. So, actually, like that was that I'd be th- sort of when we gave out maybe about twenty um, copies of Positive Education, and it really kicked off. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the sort of, sort of um, one of the sounding boards of like people going, "Oh, this is a big tune," sort of thing. So that was mm-hmm. that was the kind of beginning of the Pos Ed, and that's that's how you know, and that's how records. You broke back in those days yeah. as well, you know. It's like it's you need a couple, use three or four or five big name DJs, kind of mm-hmm. picking up on it simultaneously. You know? Picking up, uh, we've had a couple of guys on the podcast that stretch back to you know to those, days. Th- th- those days, and they're saying it's you know a record would last so much longer. Oh, aye, oh definitely, definitely. And, you know, a few definitely. key plays on key radio stations yep. would 
have the, if every DJ in the club's talking about it, no, yeah. you can get a hold of it, and then boom, yeah. you've got a hit record on your hands. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just access to information now, though, yeah. isn't it? It's like it's so quick to just be able to grab mm. something. So disposable that's what, exactly. Well, so like, I've, one got week it, I've got it. Right. Yeah. I'm not on the next one. And that's why I think it's important what you've done with the Slam album. Like make it more of a concept mm -hmm. with the artwork, with the album, like stories attached mm -hmm. to it. Yep. So you get yep. the music, and you go, oh, you're, you're almost away in the story while you're listening. Yeah. Rather than just records. Here's another it. tune with another hit and kick. And I mean, that's the thing. Albums have got to, there's got to be another dimension to an mm -hmm. album these days. It can't just be like 10 club tracks. Do you know what I mean? There's no point in doing that. You'd be as well just putting out three EPs, you know, of the of the club tracks, you know. So mm -hmm. albums have got to have some sort of story or interest or some other dimension to them to mm -hmm. make them work these days. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I see the positive education track. Obviously, it was a while ago now. Like, was that an idea that somebody was just messing about with it? The so, those sort of chords are the stamps. Talk to like, about this it took, 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 us, a took us a month mm -hmm. in the studio to put it together. Right. So there was it was like it was actually like four sections. Right, so okay. there was like Ord came in with this idea, and then Stuart came up with this idea. I put the drums together, and and uh, and then Jim put the the kind of the the. Uh, the, the, the hook line together mm -hmm. and the the, the Jupiter eight it was it was it was the the, the synth that it was on um, uh, so it was just like so it was just like it was a long process mm -hmm. actually to put that track together because it was like almost like four different ideas that yeah. came together came and together. managed to kind of put and it the all task together. is how you blend those sections yeah, exactly exactly yeah, exactly so it wow. took a while like, it took a while but I mean I guess that started shaping the sound though for what the label was doing because obviously it went with a whole sort of indie dance thing and then it's maybe oh we, maybe we're starting to come across a niche of this sound it became a bit more techno yeah and then that was the track that Daft Punk like, heard and then they um th th made them aware of us I mean I mean they were just they were they were an indie band actually um um uh, what were they called uh, can't remember what they were called they were an indie band and they got a they got a review in the NME and it, and it called them like a like sound like a Daft Punk. Yeah, you're Daft Punk. Aye. Aye. <laughs> um, so, but they they turned to pause Ed, and um, so when we were playing a festival in Paris, um, '93, I think it was. Um, so Slam were playing and Rejuvenation were playing, and it was it was meant Euro Disney. It was called. It was meant to be in Disney, but it, it got bumped because then they found out it was a rave and all that, and it was like so we, it was somewhere out in the middle of the countryside outside Paris, and we get interviewed by. A guy for a fancy, and he was like, "Oh, you know, come into it. You're in Paris tomorrow. Come and meet my pals. They, they've they've started a band, you know, and um, they've uh, they've got some tracks, and they're mm -hmm. really good, and they really want to meet you, and they like positive education. So, um, we when we were in, we were back in Paris the next day, and we went up to Montmartre, up to it was a, uh, 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 um, was it Guy Manuel's house." Dad's house. It's just up in the kind of garret, up and kind of up these stairs to a wee bedroom. Mm -hmm. Need a wee Tascam Porta Studio four track thing, and um, blasted out um, the new wave and rolling and scratching. I think mm -hmm. was was the other track that they played us, and uh, we were just like, wow, mm -hmm. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So. Um, yeah, so that's that's how we met and all that. So um, then we went back home. And, and so we put that out and then they kept on sending us stuff and it was Dave it was they, they sent us defunct and it wasn't finished and Dave kept they kept on going right well what about this EP what about this EP and David kept on going well what about that one the kind of funk the funky acid thing in it and like so they were like all right we haven't finished that yet we'll keep get back to you, get back to you, get back to you. so eventually um, they delivered that so <laughs> the rest is history as they say it is indeed talk wow. about I mean there's an amazing documentary on uh, Daft Punk and actually some of the Soma guys appear yeah, in that. Dom, yes. Dom yeah, Dom took part in that as well. Yeah, Stuart Norton. Stuart, Stuart Norton, uh, as well. And uh, the, the story of how it all came together is, is, is fascinating. Blown, man. I guess one of the key key things that happened back in those days for Soma as well, like, you know, once they yeah. blew, like... Well, yeah, I mean, that opened up a lot of doors for us, you know. We, actually, we started working with Virgin Records, which maybe was a good thing or maybe wasn't a good thing because you, then you're under the constraint of mm. they gave us a lot of money, they gave us big distribution around the world, Old, but you know they were expecting hit records do you know what I mean so you're under that pressure like a band are under when they sign a major record deal right where's the hit where's the hit yeah, yeah. and you're going well actually this is what we do it's not yeah, It's I not know. about hits it's sometimes about sometimes the pressure's just actually yeah. we, want we want a hit we want a hit yeah 
Where's the hit, lads? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come um, on, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, mate, we are slamming that. We are really, 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 it's a bit different. So, I mean, that, 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 you know, so there's good things and bad things came from that. But, you know, um, we survived it, basically. So, um, I got her catalog back eventually. So, it, you know, y y you try these things and, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, you know. See, we, you, now I know one of our favourites and obviously made popular by Lemmy as well was This World. Aye, aye, um, aye. Which he, like, blew up in a whole other way yeah, yeah, by yeah. doing that ridiculous video, which yeah. is so funny, but it's such a great tune. What I mean, that, again, is such a different sound. Who who was that on the vocal and how did that come so, about? So, uh, Tyrone Visionary Palmer, who's a uh, Chicago vocalist, guy from Chicago, who... The guys, I mean, actually, that was through that whole time where, you know, it, things were a bit more commercial and, mm -hmm. and Slam were like, well, I mean, Slam were getting pushed to like have big records, basically. So are we vocal and that? Vocal and all that, yeah, yeah. And, but they wanted to do something with a bit of social conscience and, you know, make it cool, you know. It wasn't just fucking stick a vocal on Yeah, it, that's going to be a hit, like, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. a summer anthem, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they worked with um, Tyrone on that. Um, it worked with a couple other vocalists, um through the years as well, you know, um, who were really good and I mean they made some good records, you know, so mm -hmm. it wasn't wasn't a terrible wasn't terrible, you know. Um, no, it was absolutely not. It was very great. cool track, mm -hmm. man. No, it's a very cool. Again, track. it shows you the versatility there. Exactly. Doing something no, like exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. Even from the minute that record starts, you know, it's yeah. you know that be trippy. In a bell almost, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. playing, you know, good tunes. No, it is, it is, it is, but it is about standing out and doing something different, and it's funny though. So, what happened there then? Did it just end up becoming a sort of clash of interest, basically, a conflict of interest in terms of, look, I know you are giving us money in that, but look, this well, isn't the direction I, we're going in. Actually, it wasn't. It was actually what, going back to like the late 90s, early noughties, was like the, the, the whole industry changed so much, and the majors were struggling to make money as well. Absolutely. So, they. The it was a subsidiary of Virgin we worked with, um, and they closed that subsidiary down. So at that point we were like, right, well, we we won't work, we don't want to work with you anymore, kind of thing. So we'll take take the catalog back and we'll go our separate ways, kind of thing. So it was more about the the landscape changing mm -hmm. in, in the industry, you know, and and then us taking it back and downsizing and and becoming more indie again, you know, and been been taking it back more, to its roots, really. yeah, basically, yeah, and and and. and getting our vision back about what we wanted the label to sound like, do you know what I mean? So Plus Slam had been built to a level of being like the kings of techno in Scotland as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's like then the new indie wave of going back to your roots actually came differently because you had been more established. Yeah, so definitely. So you could uh, probably well, have a bit a more freedom. idea of what to do exactly. as well, you know. That's really cool. What the pitfalls so are. see, what I like, obviously, the tie-in with Soma School is like the positive education yeah, like there's something about that title that, that now somehow ties into mm -hmm. Soma School and the importance of the educational side to what it yeah, is. Yeah. We're all mm -hmm. doing. These years later, it ties back in. I know. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what's the story mm -hmm. with that? Is there a story with that there? Or? No, it was just the, it was just a sample that was on the record. You know what I mean? And, and like <laughs> from, 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 from when we started doing this uh, Soma School, it was like we, we were all, we always wanted to do an educational type thing um you know to, to, give, give, to give back yeah. to the kids if you want you know what i mean um um and positive education was just mm -hmm. as, as an obvious choice to mm. call it positive call education call it. always corrects error is a sample which is a synonym not synonym it stands for peace mm -hmm. peace and we're people of peace man and we're people <laughs> of peace in this well, level this is it this is it yeah. So, Rosie, you obviously you've take a lot to do with all the inner workings of Soul Man, like mm -hmm. basically running a, a a record label, you know, in the modern age in Glasgow and stuff. So, what advice would you give to? I mean, obviously, we see so many DJs and people popping up now and stuff, mm -hmm. and people wanting to start level labels and take ownership of, yeah. you know, distribution things like that. What would be your sort of top tips for people looking to venture in and take that next step of creating a label? Um, I think. Education is important. Experience is good, but I went to uh, UWS University and did a commercial music course there, um, which really gave me the tools to um, okay. get get myself involved. It made me put a night on at La Cheetah, made so many uh, new friends who were in the scene from yeah, there. Mm -hmm. uh, and eventually it made me get into Pressure, met, became a PR for Pressure as well. And from that, eventually I got... Um, an internship at Soma, and then I started work here three years ago. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of ties in. You can't just expect something to mm -hmm. uh, come to you. That's the main thing. You really have to um, 
make friends with people in the scene, really know your stuff as well. And uh, the more you just kind of a DIY, do it yourself, start mm-hmm. my own night, yeah. really just I put mean, myself out there to start. I to- um, totally agree, involved. Rosie. I mean, just build your own scene, build your own thing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You need to, you need to sort of build, build your own scene, you know, and... and Network a bit. I mean, it's not really networking, but you're out, you're out meeting people and they have like minded yeah. people into the same music yeah. and the same scene. You're, you're not, naturally you know, going to go not, on, yeah. It's not, it's, yeah. not, it's not a cynical thing, is it? It's, you're just, mm-hmm. just kind of interacting with people on the same wavelength kind of thing. But, mm-hmm. but building your own scene, do your own club yeah. nights, you know, obviously. Then you know if you, if you are good, then people will get a, will hear about you and then start booking you and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. But with record labels, you know, I, I'm not sure if record labels. I'll be valid in 10, 15 years' time, I'm not sure, because there's so many things like Bandcamp and and, and lots of artists are taking back control of their own yeah. sort of catalogue and all that and, mm-hmm. and putting it in, in Bandcamp and, and their own thing. I mean, there's so much stuff out there, though. The thing that a record label is good for is whittling down the wheat from the chaff and, put, you know, and having a quality control type thing, yeah. you know, to put records out because there's so many people making music mm-hmm. now. I mean, we get sent about 100 demos a week, you know. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, so much. And um, so, you know, if anything, it that's what a record label is good for, you <laughs> yeah. know. Um, mm-hmm. So, but, you know, for me, I think maybe in 10, 15 years, maybe record labels, you know, there might not that's even be a need for them, you know. I'm not, you know, I, I don't know, but, you know. You've, all, you've always got to try and have one eye on the future yeah. as well, yeah, just course, so you yeah. can, yeah. as you've done before, yeah. clearly when it when Keeping it an eye on your sound. And I think the Soma sound has um, stayed true to dance, but it's also evolved throughout the years. And people know now when they go on to you Soma, know Soma they, know, track, yeah. they know what the sound's going to be. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's a really tight kind of quality control of um, what they, what we want to kind of put out there. And I think with any label, knowing what you are, knowing what kind of sound you want to get out there is really important. And obviously enthusiasm mm-hmm. about yeah. the people that you're putting out with. You know, you need to have a really good relationship with the artists as well, uh, which we do have. So it's always... Good fun to meet up with Do them. you have, like, a, obviously you've got a, a key group of artists that you, you, you work with now. Is it a case of, like, they'll just hit you up when they've got new stuff and it'll be, like, programming it in? Or do you leave, like, a, a space for, like, new artists coming in? Obviously you will do if you get yeah, banging tracks in. You, you want to take them on. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but both. We've, we've got our core artists. <clears throat> um, we're putting out loads of new artists at the moment as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have been doing for the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just depends when we get music in and if it's good enough to put out, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean our schedules we're projecting right yeah. up to the end of this year already, yeah, kind like of thing with releases. Yeah. So you know we're we're planning already for kind of October, November, December this year. So, mm-hmm. um, but there's still a few spaces for things that might come along. Ah, that right, we okay. yeah. in, you know, so we, have yeah. Us, yeah. we have a meeting every one or two weeks just to go over the schedule mm-hmm. and have a look, see what's changed, um, slot different people in, and you know chase people up for music. But we are always looking for new artists, and mm-hmm. we do listen to the demos as well. Some people think, oh, you just send them a demo; they don't care. We actually do listen to demos. Charles Fankler was a demo. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, we do listen to them and we're also uh, in touch with all the older artists as well. And we've got a new competition actually where it's on Splice. So I think we have SLV with Sample Pack and anyone can just uh, make a tune from the Sample Pack and then uh, hopefully have a release on yeah, Soma. So I've we're always that. open to yeah. listening to new talent. Mm, that's very cool. I think that's a reason why we you know, um, have that sound and stay relevant is because you need to listen to all the new talent that's out mm. there. The sample pack then, so how did that come about? Is that something you've done with Splice or did you just put um, it together? It was sample magic. I'm well, just going to turn the seat around. Yeah, go for we, it. Um, so we did, we did the first uh, sample pack with Sample Magic a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago, something like that, and we did it in collaboration with them. Um, and then this, the second one, because um, we went around the artists and we're like that, right, do you want to do... Just, a sample pack, you know, um, mm. but it's, it's hard for us to get time to put stuff like that together because mm. uh, they're doing loads of other stuff. But SLV put it together, did a really good job on it. And then um, Sample Magic are, are, are now 
become part of Splice or there's a, there's a kind of collaboration sort of take over type thing and um, so that's how Splice got involved right. so, mm -hmm. um, and um, they asked us if they wanted, if we wanted to do the competition yeah yeah. so that, that that's how that came about aye brilliant now Splice is a great tool for, for artists mm -hmm. that's kind of changed that whole game as well mm -hmm. you know the whole mm -hmm. rent to own thing as yep, well yep. like you know you don't need to buy a full sample pack now you can just get one credit for one yep. sound that you like yeah yeah. I've been enjoying using it, so good. Um, Which changes many things <laughs> again, though, doesn't it? It's like, like even just the way how labels have evolved and all that. So, as it's like, I don't know, man. It's just it's kind of mad the way we get access to information now. You know, it's like even like Spotify. We're at a point now where it's like you know the tune, but you don't even know who the artist is. You're like, oh, there's that great tune, but then you try and go and find it, and you're like, I can't remember because mm -hmm. I've got five thousand tunes now in there that I'm just flinging in. You're and noticing it when, like, you know, if you do work with younger people as well, like, they don't know artists, uh -huh, you know. Yeah. And None of like, them know. None of them. It's kind of good for us keeping that an ear on what they're they're saying or what apps they're using or how mm. they're digesting music, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. us running business as, as yeah, well. Yeah, like, yeah. So how are the new, new consumers going to be actually... Mm -hmm digesting this, the music or whatever it may be. Well, know? that's it. I mean, you, you've got to do... I mean, that's sort of going back to, like, how things have changed and all that in the in the, in the the sort of business. It's like things like sample packs, things like licensing tracks to adverts, really, in TV and movies and all that, and games especially is really important mm -hmm. these days, you know what I mean, as, a, as another source of income. It's not just about the record label. Mm -hmm. It's not just about releasing records because uh, if we just did that, we wouldn't make any money, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like... you probably if we're lucky break even but so you've got to be aware of all the other kind of sources of income that, you, that was available there and you can actually kind of tap into you know so absolutely it's, it's got, I mean so that that's one of the things that's changed since yeah. the beginning as well you know um, so it's the same with artists as well like almost artists need, need to wear so many different hats so you need to be mm -hmm. really good at social media I mean say yeah. the best artist is actually quite like, dyslexic and they're terrible at that then they've got to look at well that's putting me across in a certain light, unfortunately, mm -hmm. on social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. So you've mm -hmm. got to like tick that box, tick that mm -hmm. box in order for mm -hmm. your brand, I yeah. guess, to work. Yeah. It's you know? crazy. It's not even real, really, is it? You know what I mean? Because you look at most people and what they're trying to portray, I know necessarily isn't what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. So it's like we live in a crazy age where we've got access to everybody's info, mm -hmm. what they're up to. And it's like you've got to... I mean, you know, I would say with all that stuff, you just got to be as natural as possible. Do you know mm. what I mean? And, and also, if someone is dyslexic or someone's got something, like that, I, I think you use that as part of who part you of are. Yeah, big deal. Is, that's who you are. Authentic. Like, you know, being authentic is that's an least, important so. point. You know, for those that mm -hmm. maybe are like you know they're scared, they're scared, scared making music, yeah. or maybe scared, but it's like it's been through it to yourself, hasn't it? And, and that yeah. kind of shines through above the noise. Yeah, I think I think specifically maybe in the techno scene, people can see through that quite a lot as well. They can see through people who are just creating the shiny, mm. shiny social media image. Um, you know, I think it's quite such a small industry as well in terms of everyone knows everyone. So it is important You'll to get just caught out. <laughs> yeah, just stay true to yourself and um, just be nice. <laughs> I think that's a major point doesn't it just be nice mm -hmm. to people yeah. Yeah. So, so for those just going back to the you know this, the Soma Records chat and pressure and stuff so do you think that, have you used like maybe after signing an EP to Soma I went they're on the next pressure let's do it you know like that kind of crossover between the two things like I mean that artists. used to happen a lot more than it does now because <laughs> Pressure are under pressure <laughs> to <laughs> make stuff, a big or... night work. Do you know mm. what I mean? Because you know, pressure used to run every Friday in the arches. You know, when, back back in the day, so right. it'd be like in the old days, it would be like, all right, we've just signed so and so, let's mm -hmm. just get them come play. And there's no people are showing up. You know, people are going to come anyway. So, mm. so it, it wasn't like there wasn't as much pressure for mm -hmm. Stuart and Dave to book. You know, some people that are on the label and all that, and actually it helped develop the the night as well. But. Yeah. The way it's the way it, it's it is now, you know, pressures like max pressures, like it's it's th every three or four months. So mm -hmm. they, they they need big big names. They need to make sure that they're going to get those two thousand people through the door. Yeah. You know, so it's more difficult to get the smaller artists right. that we're trying to develop through. Mm -hmm. What we do now is put them on at return tomorrow or those smaller nights. Right. That are, 
not a small night. Sub club is not small. Building it's not them a small up. night, but I mean, yeah, you know, it's the, you know, so that's not the kind of path you'd say for an artist is like you know going in at that smaller level yeah, to hopefully yeah. build to like a maximum. Yeah, because they've got they've got to build their fan base as well. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. like, and we've got to, we've got to develop them and build or help build their fan base as well. You know, so mm -hmm. so it's you know it's a lot Both of different ways. things. It's the it's the agents getting gigs for them. It's us helping them with the record label mm -hmm. and then it, us like booking them at certain nights in Glasgow as well, kind of thing and and. Possibly, you know, mm -hmm. poss possibly at Riverside and things like that. I mean, Rebecca's playing Riverside this year, so, you know, things like that, you know, so. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good wheel, isn't it? It's like you, you kind of cover every angle now, yeah, which is yeah. amazing for artists yeah. getting involved with something. It goes back to what you were saying about starting your own night. If you get a wee successful night, it's got 100, 120 people in, mm. quite regular, it gets mm -hmm. you on the radar. Yeah. And then Build your own scene, yeah. Return exactly. to Mono yeah. maybe comes, and then a wee slot warming up for such and such. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and you Ten years later, you're in the galvanisers or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like mm -hmm. other places, you know, it's definitely amazing. It's pretty cool to see how it's mm -hmm. how it kind of just builds organically from yeah. there. Especially for these younger artists that you start seeing making moves yeah. now. Definitely. Yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of hard work, I think. You can't just sign to a label and think everything's going to go no, off. Not it's anymore, not about not that. Anymore, not yeah, not. it's just it's, you have to constantly be making tunes. You have to keep up the momentum, as we say. Like, yep. even our artists, they'll be sending in, you know, it's not a case of they send us four tracks and we're like, great. It's uh, working with it, create new tracks and mm -hmm. work together. And then eventually uh, the polished off thing will be released. But you can't get... Uh, downheartened by people rejecting tracks mm -hmm. or um, maybe you know one release doesn't do so well you just the whole point is you're growing as an artist of course um, so just keep, keep the momentum going keep yeah back. don't get disheartened by it yeah what would you say is like what the like in your mind one of the biggest highlights that's happened for Soma that one of these ones you went around and looked at the boys and went what are we doing man how is this happening like this is crazy uh, it's, it's been a few nights. I mean, there's a few that will happen. I can like, imagine uh, there'll be a few. Just, do you know what I mean? Just. Uh... I mean, when the Daft Punk thing kicked off, it was quite funny because we used to like pick up the phone and just say Daft Punk instead of Soma. Do you know what I mean? Because every phone call was about fucking yeah. Daft Punk. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's just looking at each other, going fucking. You know, what I, mean? I still get people going, "Oh, I want to license this track for this thing," and I'm like, "No, it's not us anymore, mate." You know, it's like put you in contact with. Right. Do you ever hear from them about that anymore? Um, but occasionally, well, they did, they did, they did, um, they did something for the Soma Twenty. They gave us a track for the Soma Twenty compilation, um, and. Um, Slam did a, re a remix of that track for Soma 25, so very occasionally, very occasionally hear from the guys. I mean, I think Dave Dave uh, hooked up with them when he was in Paris like three or four years ago, so I think so. Very cool. Mm -hmm. had a coffee, you know. So. They're one of those guys, that, you know, groups that really shot to stardom and done it in a way yeah. that's so yes. cool. It's electronic, but they've stayed true mm -hmm. and they've hidden themselves as well. Yeah. Well, they Most can still walk don't down the street, it. you know exactly. I mean? so, yeah. it's so smart, like so smart, because, you know, at the level that they actually are, they shouldn't mm -hmm. be able to do that. Exactly. So it's what an awesome thing that's been for them. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's like they you know an absolute look into like the minds of a proper creatives that they've mm -hmm. got everything dialed mm -hmm. in from what the was the, he the helmets keeping themselves. Oh, well, that's what it was. Well, I mean, that thing we watched it was even to the point like even on lunch breaks and all that they were keeping the helmets on and they while were filming, not even letting the cast of people they that they worked with. Just feel like <laughs> <laughs> that's on it. I well, that, I, but it was like they didn't <laughs> even <laughs> want any of the staff or that knowing the what they look like because it's like no, we need to keep this on so no one knows, man. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. So it's madness. So summer school. Summer school. Let's move on. Um, summer. And it ties into what, what you were saying there about if people want to get involved in the scene, it's like probably that's the first place mm -hmm. rather than yeah. running a night and jumping into that. Yeah. To like, meet people. Go yeah. along. It's a good stepping the stone. Vibe, you know? The whole point in it, I think, is to be a stepping stone mm -hmm. because I know for me, I found it quite hard to actually get all this knowledge about the industry in the first place. When I went to uni, there was never anything electronic. It was all bands based. And from the sounds of it, it's still the same mm -hmm. in universities. So I think this is kind of giving people who want access to the industry but not sure how to do it, that first step into into getting access into Absolutely electronic agree. music. Yeah. Um, I think even though electronic music is huge in Scotland, it's really kind of underfunded in some ways and not looked at. So I think this is really trying to push it out into the light and being like, this is a 
you know, especially Glasgow is great for like techno tourism mm -hmm. and really That's the massive. more people we get involved mm -hmm. as well, um, just building up futures for the younger generations. And hopefully in the years to come, we'll see, um, you know, great new nights, great new artists coming just from Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important for like, like us to keep this again momentum going and and making sure we they, we drop those seeds into like the minds of mm -hmm. the youngsters coming. Like, wow, I'm blown away here. I'm. I want a career the... in that, you know, and I can see a viable career in it, mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to getting thrusted down the old kind of ways of what it takes to go and get a job. It's like there are jobs in this. I see for people watching that, you know, might not know what summer school is. Do you want to tell a little bit about what the whole concept's about and and why we do it? Basically, it's a educational event to give kids or young people an insight into how to get into the creative industries. No, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, initially it was all about creative industries. It wasn't just about <coughs> electronic music and techno and all that kind of stuff. It was also about you know graphics and video, video DJing and all that kind of stuff and and um, artwork and and as well as DJing as stuff, well yeah. as becoming a producer as well as becoming you know um, involved in the music industry so um, and uh, and we're still we're still doing that so uh, and it's just about you know giving people some knowledge about um, how to get into it or how to start even you know I mean some people are just like oh I'm into the music how does how do I even start making music so mm -hmm. you know, from a beginner to intermediate to someone who's a bit further down the line we have uh, panels with big name DJs uh, important people from the industry um, talking about their experiences and what they advise and how, how they became famous if you like mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and then software demos hardware yeah. demos from people mm -hmm. like yourselves mm -hmm. and um, and loads of other people involved as well um, so that's great and it's a lot of it ties in with our ethos and essentially why we kind of kicked off the studio because when I grew up here in Dumbarton there's like bands mm -hmm. yeah, um, and to go into Glasgow mm -hmm. to even but even at that it was like a dark kind of art yeah, it was like I didn't is. really know how who do you, to how speak do you, to how do you first get into it how yeah. do you first get in and, and yeah. that was the kind of same values as us because since we've started this we've kind of shown to young people schools, colleges whoever that it's not just making music or DJing in order for this whole thing to work Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole admin side to it as well. There's like, you know, graphic design, there's video mm -hmm. editing, there's this, that, and the other. So yeah. you might go to SOMA school and go, well, I've never really been into DJing, but I love what this guy's doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. one of the rubber dub guys. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. I, I want to run, a, I run yeah. a shop Job one day. Or get into management or yeah. do exactly. whatever. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not just about being an artist yeah, or whatever. There's so you know. much yeah. more to yeah. the so scene much more. here. Everyone integrates. You know, we're not sitting in the office speaking to DJs, we're speaking to yeah, yeah. Um, agents, we're speaking to licensing companies. Um, we're speaking to different mm -hmm. labels. There's so many different ways. PR, mm -hmm. you know, is a massive part mm -hmm. of um, the music scene. So it's, I think it's really just showing uh, the variety of different careers that you can go down yeah. um, to be involved in the scene. It kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier as well, though. Like if it was just off the, the music, like you'd be lucky to break even. Mm -hmm. Like that's why it comes with doing the gigs, having a label, maybe running workshops, you know, selling clothing, yeah. stuff like this, yeah. because without all of that, it's like, you, you know, it's very hard to just focus on the one thing anymore and yeah. get the shows and do the gigs, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, it's so different yeah, in totally, space. Totally, totally. So, I mean, last year, what, there was like over 1,400 people or something that showed up on the day, yeah. SWG3 went mm -hmm. fabulous. I mean, it was an amazing sort of return. What was that, eight, nine years that Summer School had sort of... Been away for I'd yeah been away. yeah I think it was a it was meant to reflect what it's like nowadays. The scene is it's so much more diverse. Mm -hmm. There's um, so many different people wanting to get involved as yeah. well. So I think really hitting on that the fact that showing people that people like them are also involved in the industry. It was really important, important to yeah. show all the different variations of people putting them on a platform and being like, um, you can do it too. It doesn't matter what background you come from. Young, old, uh, you've male, got everyone female, yeah. from different backgrounds all being on panels, all doing mm. DJ demonstrations. So really hitting home that literally anyone can get involved. And this is a good platform mm. and a friendly environment. I think that's really important. There's no, you know, looking at people. There's not. There's none of that um, kind of mentality. It's a really 
open, friendly environment where everyone wants to help but each I other. I think also that has changed, see, in terms of people being friendlier, because all you ever hear about the music industry from back in the day was a lot of abuse going on and a lot of sort of weird stuff going on, right? Whereas now with social media and stuff, it's like, they're so transparent now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you start trying to act weird on me, I could put a video in, in your face and put it up online and go, <laughs> look at the way I was treated by Soma. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, just whatever, which could mm -hmm. damage the reputation. S Sonagate. I, I mean, <laughs> well, look, well, look, actually, what's just happened with, with Jackmaster. Jack, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously he's kind of went down a bit of a weird path, abusing some things, and he's done some stuff, and people are calling mm. him out on it. Yep. Yeah. And it's like, there is nowhere to hide anymore in the, no, in the no, digital no, age. If you're up to but, stuff, it's then important you're for, like, it. youngsters coming into this scene to look at that as an example and go, yeah. like, do you know what, man, I'm, I'm not going to, like, wreck this opportunity and get too drunk bang, backstage or whatever yeah. else. Because it is a job. Yeah, it's a job. But that's the hard thing about this industry. It's hard to call that. That is a job. a job. But people say all the time, oh, you must love it. Ibiza and that, getting smashed and this and that. And you're like, aye, but no other time. Still got to do your tax return. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, whatever it may be. It's like, I still have to go and show up. I might actually have to go and fly somewhere else. Some of that time I might be on my own. So my mental health's getting affected. I've hardly had any sleep. You're mm -hmm. drunk. You're not eating right. Yeah. You know, the grass isn't always good enough. So it's a fine balance of balance mm. in a lifestyle in the music career. And, a lot of DJs these days are really clean living, you know, like yeah. talking about Rebecca yeah, and lots stuff of, like that. She's in the gym every day. Talk. She's vegan. She's, you know, there's a lot, there's lots of lots of kind of DJs that are just like mm -hmm. that. Maybe have in the past, you know, gone They've down the road the of take, taking stuff. Mm -hmm. And but now it's that. coconut water on the right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I and uh, so, but they've seen that the darker side yeah. and had to you know pull yeah. it back. Just it's, to, it's all just, or nothing for a lot of artists, I think. You mm -hmm. know, like because mm -hmm. you can, you can, you can, it's not like half and half dabbling. It's like. This is either full on partying back uh -huh. after the yeah. show, and I'm like mentally yeah. in a bad place. The Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you start again. Yeah. And then, but, but, but <laughs> I know it's. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, and again, it's also it's like you might get away with that when you're younger as well, mm. because you're like you know you're mm -hmm. just I mean, you're more kind of bounce back from it but you know as you get older and stuff like that yeah. I think you, you just can't you, artists yeah. really realise they need to screw them up and it especially is. if you want to take it serious as a career as well yeah. Yeah. it is a disposable decision. industry though as you said you can just be famous one year yeah. especially in electronic music yeah. it's completely yeah. tur the turnover is so quick mm. you could have a smash hit one year and then you're nobody the next so it's not being an artist, just you can't think that's a be all and end all. It's really important yeah. to look at other avenues. Yes. Um. It, I think DJing can be glorified quite a lot, mm -hmm. and this Easily. is this will be you look at this. It's much tougher than that, and I think um it's only a small part of uh, people's career. So how do you sustain it then? Because I think if anything, we're sat with the right people here. Because I mean, you look at Slam. They're a testament to not only Scotland, but I mean, they're nearly 30 years in the game strong, mm -hmm. just as relevant now mm -hmm. as ever. I mean, any sort of thing you hear, it's like, yeah, Slam are playing, mm -hmm. you know, and they've, they've played just, a million kept times. That, like, amazing yeah. consistency. So how how do you keep the the demand for your services? Because there are so many DJs, hip hop parties, whatever, that are 15 minutes in the game. They've done two hits and see you later. It's just keeping the momentum up. The guys are releasing records every two months, every yeah. three months. So yeah. the records out, they're getting gigs. They're just so everything's hand in hand. Or they're, 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 they put an album out every mm -hmm. year and a half, every two years. So then the, the, you get in the, the main, mainstream press so you're just you've just got to keep the pressure up in loads of mm -hmm. loads, so many different angles to keep mm -hmm. the social media thing going really with you know it's just like yeah. all about momentum keeping it going keeping it going not mm -hmm. slacking up and thinking oh I had a big record last last month I'll just take it easy for a few months you just there's no taking it easy it's bang 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 what's the next one what's the next mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. always keeping the pressure up always keeping the top of it you know I think that, working hard man it's just about working hard I and that in general in itself is one of the most difficult things and it's like you really need to love it I like, just the way you say that like, you have to absolutely. enjoy it the passion's got to be matched of course for the yeah. hard work of course, like, yeah. of course drop off the, oh, the, you'll the, never, the thing if, if, you're, you're, not if you're not passionate, passionate about it it just won't happen do you know no. yeah. I mean? it's not, so, it's, and being knowledgeable as well really helps I think really understanding the history of your scene and where you where it came from uh, really helps um, just understand what kind of sound uh, appreciating the culture as well I think mm -hmm. that that's a big Definitely. part of it too. 
It's cool. Yeah. Well, this has been wow. this has been amazing. Aye. Um, Thank you very much you for know, having us. Definitely, it's been an absolute pleasure of us having Thank you, you guys. guys in here today. Cool. An education. So when? Well, I mean, I guess a nice way to wrap up is uh, on April twentieth. We April have 20th. the second return leg of yeah. Summer School, bigger and better this time. Absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. SWG three in Glasgow. Yep. What yeah. times it start? 12, 12 to half five. So it's a bit longer this time. Uh, there's, I think, pretty much the entire complex of SWG3 is going to be used this year. Nice. So um, there's plenty of space for everyone. There's going to be loads and loads of really cool stuff going on throughout the day. pressure at night. Pressure at night. So if you're in for the long game, you'll technically be there from 12 till 3 a.m. And you're over 18 as well, because summer schools, is that 16, is it? That's 16, 16. plus, yeah. So then yeah, you need yeah. to go home. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Sorry, but it's, yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a good day to, you know, get started and see what the Absolutely. scene's all about. It's a, it's a full day and night's worth of activities yeah. there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah it'll yeah, be we, a, like 24 hour day for me, I feel. <laughs> totally, well, that's it. Well, you'll meet all of us here and so many other amazing people, so definitely come down, check it out. This will be out way before then yeah. anyway, so be absolutely nice to, to shout about so thanks so again. thanks so much for coming no along problem. guys thank you, thank you guys. Guys. Thank you. episode 27 of the Escapade show fantastic thanks so much to Glenn and Rosie from Soma till next time excellent cheers